Lids, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups and I've got lots of things that I want to share with you. As predicted um, in my last Sunday sewing catch-up, I did not get a huge amount of sewing time, but I have still got a couple of things that I want to share with you. Um, I've had my first week back at work. It was really fun, really lovely to see the children. I've really enjoyed teaching this week. I am absolutely exhausted though. Um, I'm sure lots and lots of teachers that have gone back after the summer break feel exactly the same. So before I share everything I've got um, for today's video, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. And actually we've ended up with a really lovely sunny day in London today. It's been really, really warm. So I've popped on one of my summer dresses and this is a relatively new make. From the summer it's the Nina Lee um, Holland Park dress with the short sleeves that have got the elastic channel which create this kind of little bit of ruffle um, it's got the elastic going around here and over into the shoulders and around the back and then you've got the elastic channels going underneath the bust and then the skirt is quite a straight skirt so it's not particularly gathered you just get a little bit of gathering from the elastic I have got pictures of me wearing this dress so I'll put them in now so you can see and I'll link any of the patterns and fabrics that I talk about in this video down below. This fabric was from one of the So Helly Jane boxes. Um, if she's got any in her outlet shop, I'll link it down below, but it's a really beautiful cotton poplin. It's got, it's got this like um, pastel gingham pa pattern all over it. And then there's really, really cute strawberries. This has been a really lovely dress to pop on. Um, I wore it this morning just for the denim jacket, but then by the afternoon, I didn't need my denim jacket. So that is what I'm wearing. So in this video, I've got um, a couple of things that I want to share with you that I've been making this week. A work in progress, I've got challenge, I've got a book, a couple of other bits and bobs to talk to you about. So the first thing I'll start with is what I've been busy sewing this week. And last Sunday, I shared the Tammy Handmade Jessica dress. It's like a slip dress, which I'd been working on and I needed to adjust the straps at the front. I needed to shorten the straps. I needed to leave it to hang and hem it. And I'm really pleased to say that I have finished it. Um, I've popped it on and I've re I'm really pleased with the fit of it. Um, in the end, I ended up taking about four inches off the length of the straps. Um, and it took me quite a while to get the strap length exactly how I wanted it to make sure that I didn't flash any of my bra, make sure that it sat really nicely under my arms as well. Um, and this is what the dress looks like. This fabric is absolutely perfect for this dress, actually. The cowl neck detail was exactly, uh, was what made me fall in love with this pattern. I think it's absolutely stunning. So you've just got really thin straps. I don't think I'm holding those correctly, but yeah, the, the straps help to create that kind of cowl neck. And then you've got the straps on the back. You've got this really interesting, like deep facing on the front. So that's the inside of the front bodice. It's really tricky to show you. But you've got really interesting, the pattern piece, you have the front facing at the top of the pattern piece and then you fold it in on itself. And that what that's what helps to create this beautiful cowl effect at the front. And with that cowl effect, you obviously don't wanna see the inside of the dress. Um, so it means that it is lined. So you see the same fabric on the inside as you do on the outside. It's a really, really clever detail and really beautiful um, sort of finish on the dress. Um, and then I've just got the ties on the back as well. What I did with this dress was I lengthened it. It's supposed to stop at your knees. This stops kind of midi length on me and I'm really happy with where it finishes. So I did add quite a lot of length. Um, I can't remember exactly how much, but it was probably, probably about eight inches that I added on the length of um, the pattern pieces for the front and back. And that is the absolute perfect length for me. Um, so I'm definitely going to use the Fabric Godmother. Have I got it? Yeah, I don't think I've got it here. The, um, the I can't even remember the name of it, but I'll put a picture in of what the fabric looked like. It was like a flowery, um, viscosy type fabric that we got from Fabric Godmother in the Dream Wardrobe box. That came with a paper cut pattern, but I'm going to use it for the Jessica dress. And I think it'll work so nicely for the Jessica dress. Um, so this pattern is a bias cut dress, um, and that's why I had to hang it overnight um, before I hung it. I actually ha hung it, hang it. I actually hung it for quite a while before I hemmed it. Um, but yeah, and it took me a really long time to get the straps right at the top and also to get the length right on the dress. I think it was like four or five different adjustments that I made to the straps, but I was really determined to um, sort of use the straps to help with the fit of the dress. 
Going off my measurements, I set up a size 12 and it fits me really nicely. I feel like it's not too snug across my hips and my tummy area. I feel like I've got enough movement in it, but it doesn't look oversized. Um, so I'm really pleased with that one. And then last Sunday, I talked about wanting to get the Tummy Handmade Naya t-shirt sewn up in that lovely modal um, jersey fabric from Rainbow Fabrics. And that is exactly what I did. It's just a really straightforward t-shirt. I just wanted a pink t-shirt to go with some of my trousers and skirts and things just a plain t-shirt really love the sleeves with the option um with the naya t-shirt you have the option for adding a cuff i didn't do that i just hemmed it and i really like the finish on that it's such a straightforward t-shirt i did add about three inches on the length because i find that the naya t-shirt um stops quite short on me so i did add probably about three inches onto the length really straightforward t-shirt and um, you've got a little neckband piece that you insert as well there's no sleeves to insert which makes it really speedy to sew up so it was absolutely perfect um making sure that i could do a little bit of sewing this weekend um and completing a project this weekend i knew it'd be really important to do a little bit of sewing but i knew that i wouldn't be up for doing anything too complicated so i'm really pleased with that one the modal jersey feels lovely and soft and it's a really nice weight as well and I know that I'm going to get lots and lots of wear out of that t-shirt. Then the other thing that I've got sewn up, and I was not meaning to get this sewn up at all, but I've been going through my fabric stash. So on Friday um, evening, got home from work, had dinner. Um, I did a little bit of schoolwork that I needed to do, just like organising and things. Um, and then I really got an itch to do some sewing. I didn't have the Naya t-shirt cut out. I cut that out on Saturday and sewed it up on Saturday as well. Um, I'd already traced off and cut out the Rosamond blouse, which um, is a Madswick pattern, which came in the um, project box by Hazel's sister, but I wasn't really feeling sewing up a blouse. So I went through my fabric stash and I pulled out this incredible neon yellow um, quilted fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother. And I have, I've got it in this colorway, but I've also got it in a purpley lilac colorway. This one, I remember I wanted to sew up like a, almost like a hoodie type pattern, but I didn't have enough of this fabric. So it sat in my stash for a while and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to turn it into. And then I don't really know why, but inspiration struck and I really wanted to turn it into the By Hand London Nerissa quilted jacket. I've sewn that up twice now, I think. Once in a quilt that I got from Dunelm in this gorgeous like rainbow quilt where I, I absolutely love it. And then once in three uh, quilted fabrics that I got from Fursa Fabric in these beautiful pastel colours. I'll put pictures in of both of them. Um, so I wanted to see if I had enough of this fabric to turn it into that. Now this fabric is a quilted fabric, but I, I also think it is slightly waterproof. It's got this lovely shine to it. So I didn't want to just sew up the Nerissa jacket without the hood. I thought that kind of defeats wearing this beautiful waterproof type fabric. I thought the quilting would keep me nice and toasty and warm, but the kind of sheen would mean I'm probably in a like torrential downpour. I wouldn't be kept water waterproof. I wouldn't be kept um, dry, but if there was a light shower, I'd be able to wear this. So I decided to play around with two patterns. So the Tilly and the Buttons Eden coat, because I know it's got a hood, and then the By Hand London Narissa jacket. And I basically omitted the collar and I just used the hood pattern. I didn't use the lining for the hood because this fabric, I didn't think you needed it to be lined. Um, but what I did instead was I finished the neckline um, with some bias binding that I got from Specky Seamstress. And you can see that some of the edging I've decided to overlock, but some of them I've decided to finish with bias tape. And I really love this bias tape. I think it's really fun. I'm going to order some more of this if they've got this button one in stock, because I do want to finish the seams inside the hood um, with that bias tape as well. I think that'd be really fun. And then I also decided to hem the coat using the same bias binding. If you can see it there, the hem is finished with the same bias binding it just adds another pop of color on the inside and it gives a really neat finish as well this coat has got pockets really lovely slanted pockets that are really deep and what i decided to do with the pockets was i fully lined them so i used the same fabric to line the pockets just for a little bit of extra warmth and sort of waterproofness and then it's not completely finished because i need to add uh, poppers 
but if I put it on, I'll show you. And I've got pictures and videos of me wearing this. It's a nice lightweight kind of waterproof jacket that I know that quilting will offer a bit of warmth. Um, but what I've decided to do is I'm using poppers to finish the coat to fasten. I was worried about putting buttonholes in this fabric. I thought it'd be an absolute nightmare on the sewing machine, but I did want the coat to be able to fasten. So I've only put one popper in so far. I also didn't want, or I couldn't decide what buttons to use. And then when I was using the poppers, I thought it'd be nice to not have them on view when you've got the coat fastened. So, so far I've inserted one and a half poppers. I've got a lot of poppers to hand stitch on. Um, and this fabric is quite thick, so it did take me a long time to get the popper on there. Um, not so much on this one. I found that one a bit easier to sew on. Um, and I've also realised I must get myself a thimble for when I'm hand sewing because I don't have one. And actually it was really hurting my hands when I was sewing that. So I have got, I think I wanted to, when I measured the coat, I want to get eight sets of poppers on. So that's going to be my hand sewing um, on the sofa this week after a day of teaching. Um, and then I'll be able to share it when it's completely finished. So that is going to be one ongoing project. And then the other project that I've started is the um, Rosamond blouse, um, which was the pattern that I shared last weekend, which came in the Hayser Sister box. So, so far, it doesn't look like I've done a huge amount, but it's mainly prep work. I've got the front um, parts of the blouse attached to the back. And then I have gone with the contrast ties so I've stitched the ties and I've basted them in place. And then you've also got um, button loops that you sew. So it looks awful at the moment, but I've put the, I've sewn the loops and I've basted them in place. And then there's an option for a modesty placket. So I've put that in place on the other side as well. It doesn't look like I've done a huge amount, but like I say, it's been a lot of prep work and interfacing and pressing and turning and measuring and things. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting on with that this week. Um, and maybe a little bit of time next weekend as well. So next week, hopefully, I'll be able to update you. I'm not sure I'll, if I'll get it finished, um, but we'll see. Maybe I will get it finished. I'm really looking forward to having that completed because I think it will go with a few of the things that I've got in my wardrobe. So that's all of the sewing that I've been getting up to this week. Um, I've also dug out some fabrics, so I thought I would just talk through some of my plans for some of the fabrics that I've had in my stash. I haven't been buying any fabric yet. Next weekend, I'll have the So Hilly Jane fabric to share with you. So I've just got a few pieces of fabric, which I'll just grab now. I've got three pieces of fabric. Um, two of them, I'd really love your help. One of them, I think I know what I'm going to do with it. So this is a, I think it was just a linen fabric, yeah, that I got from Semi Sunshine. Look how incredibly bright that fabric is. I absolutely love it. Now, originally, I bought this with the Tilly and the Buttons Thea trousers in mind. I don't think I'm going to use this for the Thea trousers anymore, but I do want to sew up a pair of trousers. And the reason I don't want to go for the Thea's is because they've got the zip fly at the front, and that is quite uncomfortable on my tummy. So I have got three metres of this incredibly bright um, pink linen fabric and I really want to turn it into a pair of trousers. I think I'd like them to be um, wide-legged but I don't want them to be as wide-legged as the McCall's pattern that I've been really enjoying sewing up. So if anyone's got any suggestions for what I can turn this into, I don't want it to have a zip fly. I'm okay with a um, zip down the side or some other fastening. Um, please let me know if you've got suggestions for what I can turn this into because I think this will make a really fun pair of trousers that I can wear in the autumn time. Um, so I'd really love your suggestions for that. This amazing fabric I got from Sumi Sunshine ages and ages and ages ago and I'm going to turn this into a cardigan. Uh, not decided on the pattern yet but I want it to be quite a long length cardigan with long sleeves. Um, so I just need to go through my cardigan stash and decide on what cardigan to turn that into. But I think that'll be a really fun and a really enjoyable sew. I love those colours. They scream autumn. So I'm really keen to get this sewn up quite soon. So I might decide on the pattern and then get it cut out. Probably won't get on to sewing it up yet, but at least, but at least I will have decided on the pattern and I will have been able to get that cut out. And then this one, I can't remember where I got this from, but it's like a neonish um, needle cord. It's like a baby cord, actually. It's on a white background. It's got lots and lots of kind of dots and dashes, which kind of makes the background look grey. And then it's got these neon blue leopard print dots 
um, that are surrounded in a black border. And I'm going to turn this into a sleeveless um, fabric godmother fleur dress. And I think that will be perfect for the autumn winter. I could pair it with some woolly tights, um, ankle boots, um, maybe a long sleeve top underneath or a cardigan or jumper over the top of it. And I think that will make a really cute pinafore dress. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with that fabric. It's been really enjoyable um, and really fun kind of shopping my stash um, and just thinking of ideas for some of the fabrics that have sat in my stash for a while. So that's just a few of the ideas that I've got um, for this week going on for the next couple of weeks, actually, realistic. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was a new pattern that I instantly bought as soon as I saw it. And it's the new pattern by Sew Over It. So it's the Carly um, polo t-shirt and dress pattern. I fell in love with this as soon as I saw it. I think it probably helped the fact one of the models was wearing this gorgeous bright green version of the dress. That was the dress that I just completely fell in love with. So it's a new pattern by them, um, by Sew Over. It's called the Carly Dress and Top, and it's a polo dress and top um, aimed at confident beginners. And it comes in sizes UK 6 to 30, and that's broken down into two size brackets. So a UK 6 to 20, or a UK 18 to 30. There's version one, which is a midi dress, and it's got all of the features of a polo t-shirt, but it's just been turned into a dress. And you can sew that with long sleeves, or you can sew it with short sleeves. And the short sleeves, I believe I'm correct in saying finish with a cuff. Um, and then the sort of opening here, the sort of V-neck kind of opening, um, you've got the option of either finishing it with buttons, press fasteners, or you can just leave it open for like a relaxed fit. And with the top and the dress version, you've got a proper collar with a collar stand on there too. And it looks really lovely. Um, they do recommend that you interface parts of the pattern when you're sewing it up. And they also recommend that you have some ribbon to stabilise the shoulders. Version two is a hip length top. Both versions, I think, are absolutely beautiful. In terms of the pattern itself, so I've talked about quite a lot of the features already, but it's a classic polo collar with a collar stand and it's also got button placket. You can add buttons, press fasteners or leave it open. And then it's got a shaped um, seam at the centre back, which helps you with the fit of the dress. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend medium weight knit fabrics with good recovery, like a cotton jersey or a rib knit fabric. So I've been going through my stash to see if I've got any fabrics that are suitable. Otherwise, I think I might be doing some fabric shopping so that I can get a couple of versions of that pattern sewn up. Um, I'm very excited about getting that sewn up. I bought the pattern off their website as a PDF pattern and I also paid for them to print it as a copy shop. So hopefully that will come this week and I can start working out what fabrics I'm going to use for that pattern. But it looks like an absolutely beautiful pattern um, and I'm really excited about giving it a try. So the next thing I wanted to share was the new book by Crafty Pie. So it's called Dopamine Dressmaking. As soon as she shared that um, she was bringing out a book, I went on her website and I ordered it and I ordered a signed copy. So it's got a little message in there that just says, happy sewing, love, Brogan. I've had a little flick through the book um, and there's lots and lots of different patterns. There's a couple of patterns that I have downloaded and I've sent to be copy shop printed and I'm really excited about sewing them up. So I just thought I'd share a little bit of information about the book and share a couple of the patterns. I'll share the two patterns that I'm really excited about getting sewn up. So for anyone that doesn't know, Brogan was on the Great British Sewing Bee um, and she's got her own shop where she sells fabric and haberdashery items as well. She's designed lots of different fabrics, um, including a fabric that was in the Sew Hilly Jane box in August. This gorgeous, um, actually I've got it here, beautiful viscose, bright gingham viscose fabric. So she's also released a book and it's got lots and lots of beautiful patterns in the book. Um, now, just to say this book, um, in terms of sizes, it's a UK 6 to 22. So it is a shame, a bit like the Tilly and the Buttons books, it's a shame that uh, um, size range isn't more inclusive. Um, but yes, it's a size 6 to 22. It's broken down into lots of sections. So you've got like the introduction, a bit about dopamine dressing, what's in Brogan's sewing kit, fabric information and a sewing dictionary. And then it tells you how to use the book and then the project. So there is a t-shirt dress, a sundress, a tea dress, the buffet dress, the everyday dress, the bib dress, the shirt dress and the party dress. So they're all dresses. And then there's some information and some suggestions about how to style it as well. 
Um, there's lots and lots of ideas for hacking the patterns. Um, so you can sew lots of different variations. And then also, I'm just trying to find it. You don't get any of the patterns printed. Um, instead, there's a QR code that you scan and it takes you to all of the files. So it takes you to the print at home files, but also the AO copy shop files as well. That was a bit of a shame because that's what I really like about the Tilly and the Buttons books. Although you have to trace them off, at least you've got them. So I have paid for the book and then I have just paid, I think it was £14 from the fold line for two of these patterns to be copy shop printed. So if you were going to get all of them copy shop printed, that is actually quite expensive. Um, I make sure that I trace off my copy shop printing. So that's definitely what I'm going to be doing with the patterns that come here. Um, so you've got the finished garment measurements included in the book as well. And then there's just lots and lots of information about um, the different projects. So this is the t-shirt dress. And there's a variation where you don't have that kind of asymmetric skirt attached to it. Uh, I'm going to try and flip through as quick as I can so you can see some of the projects. This is the sundress and there's an option again to do it midi rather than a maxi length. And that's a really cute dress. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a sheared panel on the back of the dress. Then you've got the tea dress, which is this one, and it's a bias cut dress. And I think there's the option to sew that. I think one of the variations, that's probably a better picture to show you. I think one of the variations is just, just sew it as a top, yeah. So you can just sew it as a top. Um, then there's the buffet dress. So this is the pattern that I have sent off to get copy shop printed. Um, and it's got buttons down the back, which you can see here. And then you've got the option to include a collar. The version that I would really like to sew up is the version that doesn't have the collar. Um, and it's this version here. I really love this look with the polo neck long sleeved t-shirt underneath and then the buffet dress over the top. So I've sent, um, well, I've sent the buffet dress with the collar included, sent off to get the copy shop printed. But this is the version that I'm going to get sewn up. And I've got some denim in my uh, fabric stash, which I think I'll probably use for that one. Then you've got the everyday dress, which is an above the knee finish in terms of length and it's a sheared bodice. And then a variation on that is just, just sew it up as a top. I can show you. I really love the look of this one actually, paired with those trousers. Maybe it's the colors that I'm absolutely loving, but I like how you get this kind of almost ruffle effect at the bottom. And then you also get the same at the neckline. Um, and I really like the styling on that. Then you have got the bib dress, which is this. It's kind of a nod to a vintage pattern. I really love the um, sort of bib effect here and the fact that it's all in one colour, apart from those buttons. I think they can really pop. I thought it was a cute, really cute one. And then a variation is to sew it up as a top. Then the next pattern is the shirt dress. And I absolutely love this pattern. This one I've also sent to get printed. And I really, really love the ruffles along the top. I think it gives a really interesting detail to a shirt dress. Absolutely love that. Um, so I'm really excited about getting that one sewn up. There's a bit more of a close up. It's that ruffle detail for me. I just think it's beautiful. And then also the sleeves are finished with this really cute tie detail, which I absolutely love as well. And then this is a really cute one, but practically I don't know where I would wear this to. Um, but this is called the party dress. So it's really cute. Um, got these gorgeous puff sleeves. You've got a little tie belt kind of detail, but it's the back that's got all the drama with this lovely heart cut out. Absolutely stunning. Um, really, really love it. I'm just not sure where I would wear that to. So that's why I'm not jumping in and getting that one sewn up. Um, so I'm going to focus on the two patterns that I know will fit into my wardrobe at the moment. But that one is a really cute pattern as well. And then she just gives you some ideas about how to style the projects throughout the different seasons as well. So some really, really cute patterns. There's a couple that I'm desperate to sew up. Um, and I will report back on how I found the instructions and also how I found the fit once I've had a go at sewing a couple of the patterns out of this book as well. Um, but it was a really lovely book to kind of flick through and have a look at some of the patterns. There's some really cute patterns in that book. 
Um, and then the next thing I wanted to share with you was a new sewing challenge, which is running over on Instagram and it's being hosted by Tomcat Stitchery Carmel. I'll link all the details down below and where you can find out more information. Um, I love the idea of this challenge. It's called Precious Fabric Challenge. So the idea is that you pull out some of those precious fabrics that you've been saving for the right occasion and the right project to come along and have a go at sewing them up. I am guilty of holding on to a couple of precious fabrics. Over the last couple of years, I've been really good at pulling them out and sewing them up and just getting them turned into garments and really enjoying wearing them. But I've got one fabric in particular that I keep pulling out and I keep sharing with everybody and asking for suggestions, but the right project really hasn't come along yet. Um, and it's a fabric that I bought from the New Craft House years ago with this amazing astronaut print on the back of it. So I'm gonna share three fabrics that I've pulled out of my stash that are potentials for getting sewn up for this challenge. So it's called the Precious Fabric Challenge. It's being run by Tom Cat Stitchery Carmel. Um, we're being encouraged to sew up those precious fabrics throughout the month of September and then post your make on the 30th of September. So it needs to be a new make, so not something that you've already shared before. Um, only one entry per person. So you don't have to pull out lots and lots of precious fabrics. You can choose one precious fabric and get that sewn up and then share that on the 30th of September. Make sure that you tag Tomcat Stitchery Carmel and then also use the hashtag Precious Fabric 24. So there are three fabrics that I've pulled out. Two of them haven't been in my stash for very long, but one of them's been in my stash for years and I'm still really scared to sew it up because I just feel like it needs to be the right project. So first one is this really beautiful embroidered, I can't even remember what the type of fabric was. It's a dusky pink so it's not a fabric colour that I would normally go for. It's coming up quite white on the screen but it's a dusky pink. It's got all of these beautiful kind of circles embroidered over the top of it. I got two and a half meters of this fabric and originally I thought I would sew up some trousers and a jacket. What I would really love to sew up now is a waistcoat. I just don't know what pattern to go for. I've seen those beautiful kind of stylized pictures of people with the fitted um, waistcoats and then narrow um, trousers, narrow leg trousers. I don't think I want that. I was thinking maybe some cropped trousers perhaps, or even a skirt. Um, or some wide leg trousers, I haven't got a clue. But anyway, I, I'm thinking of using this definitely for a waistcoat and then something to go on the bottom half with the waistcoat. So if anyone's got any suggestions of patterns, please let me know, because this could be one precious fabric that I get sewn up. I pull it out and then I think about what I'd like to turn it into and then I put it away again, because I'm not sure what I would like to turn it into. Um, I think I've actually got three meters of that fabric just looking at it. The next one, I can't remember what type of fabric this was, but it's really lightweight, beautiful mint. I want to say it was like a brocade, but it's actually a really lightweight one. It reminds me of like quality street wrappers that you get. Um, it's in this beautiful mint green. It's absolutely stunning. I would need to line this. I was originally thinking of turning it into a jacket or a blazer, but now I don't really know maybe a blouse but I don't know if this would be a bit scratchy um it definitely would need to be lined because it is a little bit scratchy on the other side so I'm completely haven't got a clue with this fabric at all I have got two and a half meters of this fabric so if anyone's got any suggestions it's really lightweight but I feel like it needs to be something I don't know where the fabric can really shine. Uh, please let me know in the comments below because I don't know what I'm going to turn that into at all. And then this is the most precious fabric that I've got in my stash. I don't know if I'm holding it up correctly. Probably won't be able to find an image online because it was from absolutely ages and ages and ages ago. Um, but it's got, I think that might be upside down, astronauts all over it. It's got this incredible print. Yes, there we go. You can see it of astronauts. And the reason I haven't cut into this is because I want those astronauts to all stay together and I have no idea how to do that or what pattern um, would lend itself to that print being able to stay together. Lots of people in the past have suggested like a dressing gown or something that I could wear around the house. But this fabric is so stunning and so special that I really want it to be able to be turned into something that I can wear out of the house. 
which makes me think maybe it needs to be turned into a dress and the astronaut panel section could be part of the skirt. So it could just be one big um, panel that I turn into a skirt, but I don't know what pattern would work. Now, how much fabric have I actually got? I think I've probably, yeah, I've only got two meters of this because I think it was quite expensive. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. I think it's such a fun fabric. I've no idea what to turn it into. I get it out, I ask you guys for suggestions, I get lots of suggestions and I just haven't come across the right project. Um, so I'd really love it if you had any suggestions for what to turn this really fun astronaut fabric into. Please let me know in the comments below. I can't remember the type of fabric, but it's got a sheen to it and it feels quite weighty actually, although it has got a beautiful drape, it does feel quite weighty. So those are my three precious fabrics. One of them I'm determined to turn into something for this challenge. Um, so I would really love your help with what to turn them into. Yeah, it's always fun shopping your stash, especially rediscovering some old fabrics that you've had for a while. And the kind of joy that you had when you first bought those beautiful fabrics. So I always like to finish these videos with um, a couple of kind of sewing plans. So sewing plans moving forward. I definitely want to finish sewing the Nerissa coat. I just need to stitch all of those poppers on. I want to finish sewing up the Rosamond blouse. Um, and then I want to get a couple of these projects cut out. So I definitely want to get this cut out. I uh, probably won't get around to starting sewing the cardigan, but I want to get that cut And then, out. yeah, I want to have an idea for one of the precious fabrics that I've shared with you today as to what I could turn that into. Um, so lots of kind of finishing off and lots of prep. Um, and then I'd also love some ideas for those three fabrics that I'd shared. So I think the next week is going to be finishing off and cutting out and just lots of prep and maybe some planning. So hopefully I'll have some things to share with you next weekend. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I've been getting up to and seeing some of the things that I've been sewing. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.